What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 7 of Park to Prem here with Lincoln City. Before we get into today's episode which is going to be the start of our second season at the club, I just want to say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever it is you're doing right now. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, technically Christmas was yesterday as you watch this video. I'm having a Christmassy break but I'm recording videos in advance so I hope you've been enjoying the last couple of days worth of videos which are have all been done whilst I've been eating far too much food and just unwinding a little bit. But either way, I want to unwind. I can't right now because we've got a league to get on with and a league to hopefully win today. A league to smash. That's going to be the aim. The media prediction going into the transfer window was fifth, but as is the case with Football Manager, season previews update and ahead of the first game of the season were the favourites to win the league, which... When this happens, it fills me with confidence that our transfer business has been good. And I know last episode I sat and I said, oh, we're not going to do a load of dealings. We're not going to be really busy. I did a little bit more than I planned. I will be honest. You can see here we have made seven new additions to the team, a whole host of free transfers and also some sales, which actually amount to more than what we paid for the players we brought in. So we've made money, everyone. Anyway, let's talk about the outs first. And on the outs, we've got Miyazek, who was our first choice keeper when I first came to the club. Of course, he then lost his work permit because Brexit's a thing. He's now gone to Greece. So have a lovely life, Camille. I doubt we're ever going to cross paths again, but he is done. The Arco has left to go to Damak. I have no idea where Damak is. What country are you in? Saudi Arabia. I mean, is he chasing the money? How much is he on? No, he isn't chasing the money. I mean, en enjoy. Your That's a weird move, isn't it? Enjoy your move in the Arco. Anyway, a few other players left, but not really any that we need to worry about too much in terms of the freebies. But Ruffin, the first of a few players who have gone out on loan. Last year, this man was our starting left back, but as you might be able to see here, we have a new left back in town we're going to talk about very soon. This guy's going to get regular first team football. Playing for Dulwich Hamlet was just kind of a move that made sense because... I don't necessarily want to sell him just yet. A few players, though, who we did choose to move on were Isaac, who has sadly gone to Port Vale. We got a pretty good sum of money for him. 68k. He had an okay season last year. He put in some pretty good ratings, especially compared to the year previously. But with some of the players we brought in, I just didn't really have a spot for him in the first team. And also, Sarpong Wadu has gone to Cambridge. So, a bit sad to see him go. He was a useful utility man. But we've already got a few utility men and we didn't need any more. We've sold him on for a slight loss compared to what he joined Lincoln for at the start of last season prior to me taking over. But he just wasn't a player that I, that I used nearly enough during my time at the club. Anyway, a few other youngsters have gone out on loan and only one is really worth mentioning, I think, in terms of they could come back to play first team football. That is Hayden Can. He has gone on loan to York. He's a good little centre back. He played a bit of football before I took over, but upon Quantz's addition to the team, alongside the whole host of other centre backs we've got, he just kind of fell down the pecking order. A loan spell this year felt like the most logical move for him. Some potential, but I'm not sure if he's ever going to be good enough for the first team, given my ambitions for the team going forward. So anyway, that's what's happened on the outs. Not a crazy amount of outs, really. A few first team players here and there. And when it comes to the ins, seven new players, including six who were released by, well, higher up in the English league clubs. Uh, I wanted to say Premier League clubs, but not all of these teams are Premier League clubs. But all of these players really add quality. And these aren't the standard players that get released aged 18. Most of these players are in their early 20s. They're actually coming up towards their mid 20s, really. So the first one we've got is Ben Cottrell, who joined us from Arsenal. This guy can play a whole host of positions in the attacking third. I like him a lot. He's got a lot of potential, which is what we want to see. And at 22 years old, he's got a little bit of time still to fulfil it. He's going to be a very useful player this year, especially with a pivot in tactical direction that we will come on to very soon. Anyway, the next player we've got, the oldest of the new additions, I believe. Charlie Carter joined us from Hull City. Last year, he actually played 29 games in the championship. Didn't have a very good spell in the championship, although it is worth reiterating. At the moment in Football Manager, ratings are a little bit busted, so you kind of can't review players off them too much, which is a little bit frustrating. But in the ch case of Charlie here, look, he played 29 games in the Championship last year. He's now coming into League Two. He's a quality player, not the best defensively, but in terms of kind of well-rounded centre mids, with the exception of his defensive ability, 
he's just a top quality player. Um, so very excited to have him. You may have spotted it, though. He got injured during pre-season. That's annoying, isn't it? Out for up to three weeks, so sadly won't feature today. Anyway, perhaps the most exciting of the players to join the team is Joel Lopez. This guy came through Barcelona's academy, moved to Arsenal on a free, has spent five years there, acquired English nationality, and well, now he's moved to the sunny old shores of Lincoln. I say shores like Lincoln's a beach or an island. Lincoln is in the middle of nowhere, everyone. I mean, it's an hour from the sea, but that's besides the point. We told him there were shores. There's a, there's a river that goes through Lincoln. He can make sandcastles on the riverbank. I don't think there's sand there. Anyway, this is all irrelevant. Joel is very blooming good. And he is one of the reasons why this year we are not going to play with wingers. At least sometimes. Uh, I think he's really good. This guy is a... Just super complete wing back for this level, top draw, 22 years old. Lots of points to prove, I suppose, having been dropped by Arsenal. The big thing of note with him, though, is the fact that he's actually gone into the Media Dream 11 at left back alongside Cumming. They are the only two players in our team in the Media Dream 11. That's kind of a, I guess, a signal of the quality that he has. Anyway, we had a left back just there. We now have a right back here. We've got Hughes, who has joined us from Manchester United. Yes, a Welsh right back, not quite as good going forward as Lopez, but make no mistake, he is extremely good. And at 21 years old, he has got a very, very bright future ahead of him. So, cautiously optimistic that with these new full-back additions, we're going to be a little better at the back. Anyway, the last couple of signings that we brought in on freeze are more attacking players. The first of which is Ellis Sims. Now, don't judge him for the haircut. I've got some questions about it, Ellis, but I'll save them for now. But let's just look at him for what he is. He's 23 years old. He's got incredible physicals. His mentals are not too bad, and his technicals, whilst one-dimensional, suit him really well to the role of pressing forward. And I think at this point, it only makes sense to compare him to Mamadou Fall, who was our top goalscorer last year, because Sims is probably the reason that Fall is an endangered species. How much first-team football will he get this year? I'm going to go ahead and say probably not as much as last year. Sims is really, really good. He's top quality for this level. You know, 17 determination, great, great technicals, great mentals as well. I wish his composure was a little bit better, but in order to remedy that, we are currently training him with the player trait shoots with power. This is a really good player trait to give players who have lower composure. Um, so I'm hoping that when he does get called upon, he's going to be a good little goal scorer for us this year. He will be on the bench to start today. Anyway, the last of the outfield players is Ain Fitzpatrick, a Scottish youngster who joins us from Birmingham City and this guy is a top top quality right winger fairly professional personality a little bit of room to improve and actually for us this year he's going to be playing at least to start with as an inverted winger out on the left hand side cutting in on his right foot and well opening up opportunities for Lopez on the overlap you might I'm slowly dropping breadcrumbs as to the tactical changes but we'll see them in just a moment the last signing we made is a second choice goalkeeper and it's Desire Williams signed this guy from who was it from it was from uh, Partick Thistle for a measly I think it was 90k 85k I think this is a really good deal he is capped at under 19 level for Scotland really good goalkeeper with some good technicals to start things off right away Kind of wish his reflexes were maybe a little better, but it's in terms of second-choice goalkeeper, he's great. And one of the big bonuses with him is that in League 2, you can only have a squad of 20, but players under the age of 20 don't have to be registered. I quite like the idea of my second-choice goalkeeper not having to be registered. And as you can see here, we are right on the limit with 20 players in the squad, and that is with only one goalkeeper registered in Jamie Cumming. So, yeah, Williams... Great potential, useful player, and an ideal second choice that just gives me a bit more flexibility in other areas of the pitch when it comes to squad registration. He does look really tired, though, in his in his picture. He just looks a bit sad. A bit it looks like he's been woken up in the middle of the night a lot. It's going to be okay, Desire. Also, fantastic. Desire Williams. What a name that is. That is a comic book hero name, if I might say so myself. Anyway, I've talked about it long enough. Let's actually show it. Here is how we're going to start the season. I'll let, you, I'll let you take a moment to drink it in. It's not a 4-4-2, it's not a 4-2-4, although it's not straying too far away, I suppose, from what we've played previously. Uh, the two centre mids remain the same. We do have, as a backup alternative still, the old school 4-4-2, but I feel like with Green joining us from Boston United, 
I have to make the most of him. And he is a top quality centre attacking mid. We've got really good players who can play as inside forwards and inverted wingers. Glatzel, I want to give a shot out on the right hand side. Last year we played him as a striker. We played him out on the left wing. This year, a chance to play as an inside forward on attack out on the right. And to be honest, I think he's going to be really well suited to this role. Another thing that really pushed me to make this change in having the wingers be, you know, more inverted roles, players who were going to cut inside, is simply the fact that the fullbacks that we've got in, both Hughes and Lopez, are massive, massive upgrades. And they are players who I really want to get higher up the pitch and get into overlaps. And I'm hopeful they're going to be able to do that for us. In terms of player instructions, not too many drastic changes, I don't think, although I do want us to play the ball a little bit more. I want us to try and string passes together. I feel like we've added a little bit of quality into what was already a really good team. And with that in mind, I want to see us grab hold of games more, less of the hoof ball up to quick players up the top, because whilst that worked last year, it's not something that's going to be sustainable as we start to climb the footballing pyramid. We can't just lump the ball over the top. It, it just isn't going to work. And we have players who are capable of playing some really nice football. And that's what I really want to lean into. You'll notice with the team for today's game, the centre mids are the same as the, the centre mids that played the playoff final. Cons and Quanza, you know, reunited at centre-back. Cumming has just signed a new contract. He originally only had one year left on his current deal. He has just renewed for an extra year. So he's got a two-year contract, which will be extended by a further two years if we get promoted. Or should I say, when we get promoted. Let, let's approach this with some positive mental attitude. He is a League One quality goalkeeper, and so to have him committing his long-term future is great. Of course, Glatzel and Thomas also finished the season with us. Thomas's loan, if in case it wasn't obvious, it got renewed for another year. We did actually get that over the line. I realised that didn't actually show in the transfer roundup that we just showed, but he is here for another year. And I think when you look across the team now, we've got a great, great squad with a lot of potential. You may have also noticed the under-23s has snuck in here. Yes, we now have an under-23s team set up, which is a great bit of progress. It allows me to give the likes of Mark Cooper, um, also YOLO to an extent, some nice regular first-team football, albeit friendlies, for at least this season to develop without the pressure of throwing them into the first team. And I think actually when you look at our squad for this year, it's a great squad, not just in terms of the starting eleven, which I really like, but in terms of the quality we've got on the bench. Having players like Ellis Sims, the former Evertonian, who's just a terrifying player to have coming on off the bench. We also have Mamadou Fall. My thinking is that if in games where it's not quite going to plan, we're not able to grab control of it, we want to go on the front foot, we want to revert back to you know our lump it up style of play. It is something that we can do. We can switch back to the 4-4-2. I envisage that being a fairly frequent change if there's games that we need to chase. But yeah, we've got game changers on the bench and the overall squad quality is really, really high now. I was conscious about overhauling the team too quickly too soon, but especially at this level of football, generally speaking, squads do have a high level of turnover. And uh, as I mentioned already, you know, the, the core of the team is still here, actually. In terms of the starting eleven for today's game, I think we've got four new players in the team, four, four new starters. Obviously, the bench is a slightly different story, although Mo Adams is here, Badrami is here, um, the likes of Taylor Richards, of course, you know, was a really influential player last year, sees himself slip down the pecking order slightly, but still a great option to have on the bench. And I'm I'm feeling good. I feel like we've done really good transfer business. And I'm excited to see a different style of play today. You know, we've spent three and a half years playing a 4-4-2. Let's see what we can do here. We're taking on Exeter away from home. I know some of you are probably wondering, Jack, when are you playing Boston? When When's the Boston game? It's going to be in a couple of episodes time. We play them, I think, around the start of October, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, let's get into this game. Let's hope that the fullbacks are going to be the difference makers that I think they're going to be. Very excited to see how they get on. I've got an extra close eye as well on Glatzel out on the right-hand side. One of the really nice things actually is if players like Glatzel, who are playing out on the right today, don't perform, the versatility in a lot of the players we've brought in is huge. We've got a lot of squad depth and a lot of ability, of ability to rotate things around. I realise, I was pointing at the far side for Glatzel. We're playing in green today, everyone. We're playing away from home, so he'll be on the near side to start things. And well, 25 seconds into the season, Fitzpatrick cutting inside has a go from range. I respect it. Make a mark on your debut, Fitzpatrick. Lopez, complete on oh my word. I mean, I've, I've 
I'm a genius. I bigged him up. The former Barcelona lad. He's come to make sandcastles on the River Witham's river banks. And if he wants to add a few goals like that, I'm perfectly happy with that. Wow. Not, not a bad start. Green getting the assist as well. Green in green. Of course, he was signed from Boston United. We'd already talked about it in a previous episode. Great to have him in the team. He's one of Boston's best players, which is only going to, I feel like, intensify the rivalry, given the fact he's the fourth player I've signed from them in less than a year after moving. But, well, we, we can't rest on our laurels here. We can't just get that one goal and chill out. We've got to stay on the front foot here, I feel like, and try and get a few more. But, I mean, the early signs are that the new attacking fullbacks and the idea of having, you know, a bit more style about us rather than lumping the ball forward might work quite nicely with the personnel we've got. We're not really bossing possession here, but what you would say is Exeter have had one shot on target in the first half. And whilst there has been a distinct lack of highlights, we have comfortably been... The better, te better team here. They have just not been very good. I'm delighted, boys. Keep it going. This is exactly how I wanted to spend my boxing day. Green to whip in the ball here. Towards the near post. Quanta forgets how to jump. It'll come back to him within a few games. Not Matt Sharp yet, of course. Finney, Glatzel, Glatzel. This is your moment. It's saved by the keeper. Oh, I thought Glatzel was going to get off the mark for the year really quickly. And it would have been lovely. Unfortunately... He is going to be denied. But Green, pick out Quantza. Can't, can't find Quantza. Finney now with the ball. Collins, bringing it on the counter-attack for Exeter here. They are bringing the ball forward. Got to watch out, I suppose, for any danger. Although I say all this, they are well switching the play nicely. And while the highlight just ends, Haig now with it. If you can hear some weird banging, don't know what my neighbours are doing, but they've decided to do some DIY. They, uh, they want a cameo. I mean, it's fair enough. Who, who wouldn't want a cameo in one of these videos? I think it, Boston Ultra's outside the hotel room, I think. Setting off fireworks, you know the deal. Right, an hour gone. I probably should look to make some tactical changes. I should look to make some tactical changes, but we'll allow this to play out first. I mean, so far, so good, I think. I don't mean we can really knock out how we've played it thus far, although Exeter on the attack here is a bit scary. Brian with the ball, gives it to Kane out in the wide areas, who whips it in, Bishop's there, and Colby Bishop scores. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Do I blame Lopez for that at left-back because he sat narrow, or is it my own fault? Because I do have the instruction telling the team to force players to play out wide, but I feel like he could have maybe got a bit closer to his man there, and Bishop is left at the near post free. Quant Quanta's just having a daydream. He's had a revelation it's 1-1 in a game that I felt we'd been, well, the better team and we've been undone here. With that in mind, I could bring in Farl. I'm not. Ellis Sims, I'm showing some faith in you today, mate. I'm backing my new signing. Glancel out on the right has been a bit poor. So let's bring in Ben Cottrell, who is left-footed. So he will be able to cut in from that right-hand side. I probably should have paused it before I made tactical changes because they're on the attack. Surely they're not going to score before my changes take effect. Don't do it to me, football manager. Apoku to Collins to Hay. Exeter having a lot more of the ball, it feels like, in the second half, at least in the highlights we're seeing. You can see here, we edge out XG, but XG doesn't win you matches. Is it bad that in this game here, I already want to revert back to the other system to chase the game? I don't think it is bad, actually. I think it's perfectly normal. Let's do it. We've got one last change. Farl, you know what to do, mate. You, you're you familiar with this situation. Come on and do lots of running for us. I will be honest and say that I did look at selling Farl over the summer. You know, I thought the League 2 player of the season might have some interest in him. No one wanted to pay even £100,000 for him. So make of that what you will. Anyway, there is a matter of minutes left of this game. Is there one last sting in the... Well, in the tail. Is there one last twist to come. Fall. Big ball up to him. Knock down to Cottrell, who's on off the bench. Gives it back to Fall. Fall, do your thing. Do your thing. That's that's his thing, everyone. That's not the that's not the thing. The other thing is what I meant when I said do your thing. Hits it wide. There is minutes away. It's gonna finish 1-1. That's pretty disappointing. But what I would say is, given the fact we brought in a whole host of new players. There is gonna be a little bit of a gelling period. But away from home against Exeter. You would expect a better result from us. If there's a crumb of comfort we can take, 
It's the fact that I did think we were the better team for big spells in that game. Just need to take our opportunities more and maybe just create a little bit more. But I'm sure, as with any kind of new tactical system that you bring in, there's always that first m month or two of really tweaking things till you get something that you're happy with. But, I mean, Lopez has scored on his debut. Let's look at the silver linings here. Lopez has scored on his debut. Um, Boston, Boston, I wanted Boston to have lost, so I had some more positives. They've drawn. If we just look at the season preview here, we are the favourites. Exeter... Up in eighth, they're not a terrible team by any means. Interesting that Gary Garbutt has come into the Media Dream 11. I don't think he was even on, even on the bench for me today. Maybe that's food for thought. Maybe that... Am I underrating Gary? I just He's good, but I just don't like how slow he is, and I don't really like his mentals. Like, it's, he's a bit of a one-trick pony. He can tackle and that's it. Anyway, I'm sure over the course of the season he will get game time. Who knows? Knowing me, end of the season, he'll be our star man and I'll be attributing him to being the reason that we've got promoted. That's usually how these things play out. Anyway, before we wrap up this episode, I will just take a quick look at Boston just so you can see what they've done over the, the, the summer. They've obviously still got Housen in charge. He's still playing his mental five at the back system. In terms of transfers, have they spent big... No, they've brought in George Shelby, who is a pretty average goalkeeper. Oggy from Bolton, who looks like an okay centre-back, but nothing too special. And Sam Hart. These are all players who I feel like are worse than the players that I signed for them. Although perhaps the fact that they've not signed more players indicates they think the squad is good enough. Worth noting, they're loaning out DKM which I'm very upset about, but I think the reason that they've loaned him out is because they're not playing with wingers and he can only play on the wing. Halson's preferred formation is a five at the back, so sorry DKM, you are the collateral damage. It just, it just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't feel fair, but then life never is, is it? Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap things up there for me today. I think in terms of next episode, I was going to say we'll come back for the game against Bolton, but it's just dawned on me that's in the EFL Trophy. No one likes the EFL Trophy. EFL Trophy is pointless. I'm not sure when we'll be, we'll be back. We may come back for the game against Wigan. They were relegated from League One this year. They are tipped to be very, very good this year. I think they could be some stiff opposition that we're going to need to navigate through. Also worth noting, Boston sits on the horizon. 12th of October, get it in your diaries, a couple of episodes away, should be a fun one. Anyway folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today, let me know what you made of our transfer business, what do you think of the new system, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments, as I said already, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas or holiday period, or just day in general if you're not celebrating anything, and until next time, it is me Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit, I'm out.